Hey there, Phil Chu here, and back with another strategy video. Today I will talk about 22 tips and tricks that you can use in the new 1.5 update of Stardew Valley that will help new players out there have a really stable start and have a great time with the game. If you enjoy watching videos like this, feel free to subscribe to the channel as it would mean a lot to me. Without further ado, let's begin the 22 tips and tricks that you can use in Stardew Valley in the 1.5 update. When you first start your farm, you're greeted with a package on the ground. When you open the package, you get 15 parsnips that you can plant on the farm, or sell them at pairs and get yourself some higher quality crops for a better price. My best tip for this is to sell at least 10 of those and plant the 5 so you finish the quest that you have about planting crops and with the rest of the money you get, you should buy potatoes which have a chance of yielding double the crops or beans which after they mature you can pick every day. This will make you have a really stable start in the game and your economy going from the first day. On your first day when you go out the house, don't try to clear everything from the farm. Clear as much as you're gonna use and make sure you chop around 4 trees on the first day and go around the woods and mountains of Stardew Valley to forage a bunch of items. You need to do this in order to raise your foraging level up to 1 so you unlock the special perk which adds seeds to be dropped from chopped down trees. You really need this as you will need those seeds to make fuel snacks for that extra energy when you're farming. You won't need to chop down more than 4 trees as the seeds won't be able to drop on your first day. When you get it to level 1 though, the seeds can drop and you can craft fuel snacks with those. Some of the game menu options that you need to turn on from your first day are the always show the tool hit location button. When you turn on this option, it will have a red square where you point with the tool. This will save you a lot of energy when you mistakenly try to water a plant Without using this one, you can water the one beside it by accident, or also when digging or mining as well. This option will help you a lot as it will save you quite a lot of energy when you mistakenly use your tool. You also have the height tool hit location when you move, which will remove the red square from appearing when you're moving around the city. You can also change the slingshot fire mode from hold and release to pull in the opposite direction whatever suits you the best for this type of weapon. And also, the show advanced crafting information, since now, when you open the crafting window, you can check how many things you have crafted of each item, if you have the right ingredients needed in your backpack, and more. This will help you a lot, since you need it for the 100% completion. And also, you can now change your fishing bite sound to 4 choices that are given in the game menu. And the last but not least, you can change the sounds of the animals, if you don't like hearing them constantly on your farm, you can now mute them. Try not to stay up late after midnight, as if you go to bed after 12am, the following day you will start with your energy drained a bit because you went to bed too late. You need to try to avoid this as you will need every energy you can get in your first year. On the second day on your farm, you'll get a message from the local fisherman Willy and he will give you a fishing rod so you can start fishing all around Stardew Valley. But to get your fishing level up higher more easy, you should go and buy the training rod from him for 25 gold. With this rod you can only catch the basic fish, but it will help you get your fishing skill up really fast, as you will have a higher catch rate than with the normal rod. When you're chopping down the trees, make sure to leave the stumps alone. You get less wood per labor used on the stumps, and the stumps also spread seeds that will help you get more trees faster. At the start of the first day, make sure to collect 50 wood and make a chest for yourself, as you'll quickly notice that your inventory slots are highly limited. The chest is quite easy to get, as it costs only 50 wood that you can get from 3 or 4 trees. But it can help you a lot in the long run, since you will have a place to store your valuable item. Try to focus on repairing the wooden bridge that's next to Elliot's house. The bridge requires 300 wood to repair and it connects to the tidal pools where you can find a lot of forageable items that are more expensive than the ones on the first part. 
There you can find corals and sea urchins, which you can sell for a lot more than the rest of the forageable items. Try to get the 300 wood in the first few days, as unlocking this part will bring you a lot of profit. After planting your normal seed, you should go around the farm and forests and cut all of the weeds that you find, because the weeds have a chance of dropping mixed seeds. Mixed seeds are really important for a new farm, as they're the free seeds that you can get from cutting all of the weeds. That way you get a free crop that you can just plant and you don't have to pay anything for it. This will really boost your starting economy as you will have a lot of crops to take care of and sell when the time comes. And the mixed seeds are random, so you may get some nice and expensive crops at the price of nothing to sell or to use to complete the community bundles. After the 5th of spring, the community center will be unlocked and you will see a short cutscene with Mayor Lewis. Just don't forget to go inside and check out the place as you will need to activate the Juni mode. You will get requests from them that you will need to complete bundles in order to unlock some certain items in the game. But just don't forget to start unlocking them as soon as you can and completing the bundles as if you miss an item that you can get in spring and the season passes you will need to wait a whole year for the season to come back again in order to get the required item. The community center is really important to the game and by completing the bundles you unlock new features that you can access in the game. You should also focus on trying to get 2000 gold to get the backpack upgrade from Pierre. After a while you will notice that the capacity of your backpack is really low and you will keep finding a lot of stuff that you want to pick up but you can't since your bag is full. I would highly recommend getting this upgrade as the total number of 24 slots in the bag will help you a lot in the long run. You will no longer need to keep trashing things that you need in order to get some more important stuff and by doing this you will be able to earn more over time. Another really important thing is to always check the trader in Cindersap Forest. Every Friday and Sunday a trader comes by offering a lot of good stuff that are mostly off season. This will help you a lot in completing the community center bundles since here you can find a lot of stuff that you can't access in your early days of play. For example, the coconut that we see here, we can only access it after repairing the bus, but here we can buy it from the trader. I highly recommend visiting the trader every Friday and Sunday to check his stock. You may find something you need. Another important thing is that you should always leave the grass on the farm. Unless it's blocking your farming, you should not remove it until you build a silo. If you cut all of the grass on the farm in your first days, you won't be able to get free food for the animals that you will keep in the future. To turn all of the grass into hay, you first need to go to Robin's place and build a silo. The silo allows you to cut grass and turn it into hay for the animals. After getting a silo, you can cut all of the grass on the farm since it will turn into hay, but always leave a few batches of it so it can regrow and you can get more free food. In the 1.4 update, waterless crops were introduced in the game, which was the rice shoot, and in the 1.5 update, the taro root was added. If planted by bodies of water, these two crops can grow by themselves without any need of watering. You should be careful though. They can grow on a 3 tile radius from the body of water. You can get rice shoots for free from fishing or from dig sites. And the terra root you can find on ginger isle from archaeology spots. These two crops are highly effective since you don't need to water them at all. On the 13th of spring there is the egg festival in Pelican Town. Here is where you will get the strawberry seeds for the first time in the game. This is really important for new players since they will need to gather money and resources for this day only, because the strawberries are quite expensive and sold and they can give you a lot of money. Before spring ends, you can get two harvests from the strawberries. The most important thing is to gather and save up money to buy the strawberry seeds and they are quite expensive, going on 100 gold. So the first couple of days of the season, you should focus on gathering money and saving up enough to buy a lot of these seeds. Try to build better relationships with the villagers early on in the game, since that's a requirement for the 1.5 completion. Building the relationships with the villagers can get you a lot of nice stuff 
since when you improve the hearts with them, they will start sending you things in the mail, which will help you in your playthroughs. That's why I highly recommend checking the notice board daily since you can get some requests that can increase your friendship points with them. Also, keep track of the calendar for their birthdays since giving a gift on this day will double the amount of friendship points that you can get. Another really important thing that you should always remember is you need to upgrade your tools, especially your axe. Upgrading your axe gives you access to the secret woods in Cindersap Forest where you can get a daily supply of 12 hardwood per day. But with the 1.5 update, the hardwood stumps now have a chance of dropping a mahogany seed that you can plant on your farm and it will grow into a mahogany tree which, when chopped down, gives you hardwood. It's perfect for the farm since the mahogany tree can spread its seeds around by itself and you won't need to plant it and you will have a higher supply of hardwood per day. After the 1.5 update, if you go to Robin's place, she will offer a community upgrade for 300,000 gold. This is really important, as the upgrade will unlock a lot of shortcuts around the valley that will help you in your playthroughs. The upgrade is quite expensive, but it will be worth it since you will have shortcuts from the mountains to the bus stop, from the mountains to the town, and more. So that's why I think you should get it when you can. In fall, in year 1, you'll get a cutscene when you enter town of Robin and Mayor Lewis building a special notice board before his house. This was added in the 1.5 content drop and the special notice board is gonna be important for all of the new players out there. When you unlock it, you should start doing all of the requests that you can. I already made a video about all of the special orders showcasing the rewards that you can get as well as the requests. I will leave a link in the description below for that video, since they will unlock you really special items that will help you in your playthroughs. From the special notice board, you're gonna get really important machines from every villager that can help you on your farm. You can unlock the geode crusher, the farm computer, the mini obelisk and more. My tip for you is when you unlock the special notice board, you should start doing all of the requests when you can. After completing the community center and repairing Willy's boat which was added in the 1.5 patch, you'll get access to Ginger Isle. There's a few things that you need to know about this and that will help you a lot when you first come here. First of all, you should get to know the NPC Leo on the island and get your hearts up with him as fast as you can. And also, you should start exploring the island for all the golden walnuts that you can find to start unlocking the things on the island. The golden walnuts are really important as they are the currency of the island for the parrots. And by giving them to the parrots, you unlock certain regions, houses and functions on the island. The first thing that you should unlock is the farm, then followed by the house and the parrot express. Afterwards, you should save up enough walnuts to unlock the resort, as you will also unlock the pirate cove. When you first enter the volcano dungeon, you should focus on getting to the 10th floor as fast as you can, since when you reach the 10th floor, you're gonna open a shortcut to the first one and you will have access to the top floor anytime you want. At the 10th floor, there is a forge that can improve your tools and weapons and also combine your rings. This new mechanic, which was added in the 1.5 update, is really important as now you can improve your character even more. So that's why you need to get here ASAP. And the last but not least is, on the island farm, anything can grow no matter the season. This is pretty perfect as you can grow a lot of crops here for anything that you need. You can use this to your advantage to make more artisan goods or just sell the crops as it is. Well, those are the tips and tricks that I know of and I wanted to share with all of you. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful and if you want to ask me anything, feel free to use the comment section below. I am always reading the comments and I want to hear your thoughts on everything. Well, that's it from me from this video, I hope you have a great day, stay safe and I will see you in the next one.